Hey everyone, so if you're a regular viewer on my channel, you know that I normally like to end the year with making some list videos. You know, I usually talk about my favorite games from the past year, slash most disappointing games, you know, whatever I feel like making. I like to, you know, cap of the year as every stereotypical YouTube channel with making some list videos because I actually enjoy making them. However, I decided to commemorate this year with kind of a special occasion because we are closing out the 2010s. So yeah, we've had an entire decade of gaming past us. Uh, we're closing the book on it. We've also had basically eight years of this channel as well. I mean, I think around November 2012 is when I really started taking this channel seriously, which is ancient by YouTube standards. So I cannot believe I'm still here. To commemorate this event, I only thought it's appropriate that I take a look at some of my favorite gaming experiences from the past decade. You know, I would say the 2010s have definitely been a mixed bag. We got some excellent games, we have some excellent consoles, I think the current generation, I mean Nintendo Switch and PS4 especially, are excellent consoles. We've had great remakes, great originals, some really defining series of games coming out uh, in this decade. However, the reason I say that this decade has been a mixed bag, I think, is we've really seen some of the shittier gaming practices creep in, like microtransactions, um, paid DLC, pre-order bonuses, you know, pay-to-win games, free-to-play games, uh, the stupid roadmap type games. Yeah, we've had a lot of shit from the industry side of gaming, but we've also had some fucking fantastic games. So, as I said, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at each year, and I'm going to give you my favorite gaming experience from each year of the 2010s. So let's go ahead and jump into it, let's not waste any time. Starting off with 2010, and my favorite game from 2010 can only go to Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy is an indie darling, it is a classic at this point, it is an absolutely fantastic game, exhilarating, a true platformer, you know, a type of platformer game that doesn't like mess around. You know, platforming is a genre that really has been toned down uh, this past decade. We've only seen like a couple of classic, nail-biting, extremely difficult platforming games. Uh, most of them from Nintendo, honestly. We've had a couple of good Raymans. But Super Meat Boy really does define the experience. Plus, I think Super Meat Boy really did pave the way of extremely hard games becoming very popular. This was kind of a trend that I noticed in the 2010s that kind of creeped up, where people really gravitated towards extremely difficult games, and kind of the excitement of pushing through each challenge is really something that came into play a lot in this decade, especially since the end of the 2000s and the beginning of the 2010s were filled with extremely easy, highly scripted gaming experiences. And really, Super Meat Boy was a push against that. It is a game that I still come back to sometimes. It is still a game that is as exhilarating to play today as it was in 2010. It is dirt cheap, so yeah, if you want some, well, some tough, tough challenges, go ahead and pick up Super Meat Boy, I highly recommend it. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to 2011. Yeah, I don't want to keep this video too long, so I'm really only going to give like a few sentences on each game, because you know, I don't want this to be like a 40 minute dragged out video. Well, yeah, I probably should have mentioned that at the start. Anyways, jumping into 2011, people who watch my channel know that it can only be one game. Uh, 2011 goes to, obviously, Dark Souls. I mean, Dark Souls, and you are seeing the remaster on screen, was truly a defining moment in gaming, and I think a defining moment for me as well. I mean, I picked up Dark Souls honestly because I was, and I'm not gonna lie, I did it purely to grow the channel. I was looking for games that were mainstream, had some popularity behind them, but also something that wasn't like a Call of Duty that is gonna get just like absolutely swamped in terms of YouTube searches. And I came across a little game called Dark Souls. I was like, hey, this looks nice, it has good reviews, I'm gonna play it. I heard it was hard, but nothing could prepare me for the destruction I experienced in the first few episodes of me playing Dark Souls. Honestly, I was close to quitting a couple of times, but once you crack the game, once you crack the whole idea of this genre, which is to conquer a challenge 
and feel extremely good about conquering the challenge, I was hooked. And since then, I have not put down this game. It's crazy to think that this game originally came out in 2011 and I still play it a couple of times every year. I mean, it's crazy the amount of variety, the amount of creativity you can have with this game in terms of regular playthroughs. Not even factoring in all the mods, extra challenges, item runs, personal challenge runs you can set for yourself. This game, I think, is one of those classics that will always be played. And I think it's a type of game that people who enjoy it will never get bored of. And I think it's really a testament of this series that this type of game has become its own genre. I mean, Souls-like, it has become its own term. And this was the game that started it. Sure, Demon Souls came before, but this was the game that truly made strides in popularizing this series. All right, moving on to 2012. We have another indie game. I just noticed this list has a lot of indie games on it because 2012's award goes to FTL Faster Than Light. Roguelikes have been kind of a thing that became popular in the 2010s. We had a lot of roguelike games, brilliant ones, like Binding of Isaac Rebirth and all its expansions, Rogue Legacy, you know, we had excellent roguelikes in this decade. But really the one that sticks out for me, aside from Binding of Isaac, has to be FTL Faster Than Light. It's such a simple looking and easy to understand game, yet it has so much depth to it. This game is another game that is extremely difficult and you will find a trend that I tend to like very difficult games. Uh, just the amount of tactics and the amount of thinking you have to put into this game really is staggering. This game has always reminded me of like those old, you know those flip adventure books you used to get as a kid? I specifically remember there was one space theme one that I played the shit out of when I was like seven or eight and FTL really brings back those memories, you know, the amount of, I'll sometimes blind luck, honestly, but the amount of tactics you have to put into each playthrough. No two playthroughs play the same, no two ships play the same. And again, this is a game that you can always go back to. It's also a dirt cheap game and yeah, you just can't go wrong with it. This game is something that is going to be played and it's still being played very actively just because of the amount of gameplay depth that it offers. Moving on to 2013, I don't know about you, maybe you'll disagree with me, but 2013 for me was not a particularly memorable gaming year. I don't remember really any big budget games that stick out for me in 2013. I don't think I bought too many games in that year. I don't even remember. Again, it was just not a memorable year, but there is one game that sticks out, the game you are seeing on screen, and that game is Papers, Please. I mean, Papers, Please, it's just a crazy, crazy story-based border patrol game. I think it's got to be the only one in the genre of uh, you playing a fake Soviet country's border guard. Uh, this game sounds very simple and plays very simply, but again, there's so much behind it. Uh, the story, if you look behind the veil and you look at the story of this game, it really does explore that system uh, of oppression, authoritarian governments. It's just crazy how many themes and emotional moments this game can explore with such a simple gameplay, where really you are deciding simply whether to let people through your border or not let them through. Of course, it's a lot deeper than that, but Papers, Please really is a testament of how you can make a game out of a lot of things if you have creativity behind it. The art style is absolutely amazing. The gameplay is absolutely amazing. I will admit it's not the most replayable game, but the amount of fun it offers is just staggering. Is fun really the good way to put for this game? I don't know. I guess if you look at it purely from a puzzle aspect, which I do like puzzle games, this game can be fun. Thematically less so. So yeah, absolutely great game, definitely worth picking up. 2014, I don't think we have to talk about this one too much. 2014 goes to Dark Souls 2. This is probably the most polarizing Dark Souls game out there, Souls game just in general, maybe with the exception of one we'll cover later. Uh, but Dark Souls 2 is still my favorite game of 2014. I personally like Dark Souls 2. I liked it since the day it was released. Sure, the combat is different. Sure, it has some problems with overly tracking moves, uh, bullshit enemies sometimes. 
stupid hit detection, the adaptability system, it is not perfect, definitely isn't as perfect, I would say, or as solid as the original Dark Souls. However, Dark Souls 2 will always have a special place in my heart for replayability and to the PvP system. I have played more Dark Souls 2 PvP than any other Souls game. I think the PvP in this game was probably the closest to the Souls series ever getting to a competitive PvP system. Of course, there's still a lot of broken stuff, there's still a lot of broken weapons, but overall, this game's core mechanics of slower healing and tactical combat make it the perfect game for dueling. And I just remember playing hundreds of hours of this game online in the arenas. It is something that I will never forget, and even though this game is not the best in the Souls series, because of the PvP aspect, it'll always hold a special place in my heart. Plus, it's another game that I like to go back to every once in a while. So next up, we move to 2015. Now, I think 2015 was an excellent year in gaming compared to the previous couple of years. We had some truly great games. This is when the new consoles really started coming into their own, and they started actually getting some crucial, crucial games. And because 2015 was such a good year in gaming, we actually have a tie in our best games list. And that tie is between Bloodborne and Mortal Kombat X. I thought about both of these games, but I genuinely couldn't pick one over another. So we're gonna talk about both of them. Bloodborne is the game that radicalized the Soul series the most. It really demonstrated that there was more to the Soul series in terms of as a core gameplay loop than castles and dragons and dungeons. Of course, the gothic art style is what draws you into Bloodborne. It is probably one of the few games that really gets the Lovecraftian atmosphere and the Lovecraftian themes, if you read a little bit deeper into the lore, it really gets those themes perfect. Aside from the fact the main draw of Bloodborne is its combat system. I mean, it's radically different from the previous Souls games focusing on quick action, but there is nothing better than Bloodborne's combat system. Really, even though Dark Souls is my favorite in the series uh, in terms of overall gameplay, I gotta say, if we're judging the games just on combat systems, Bloodborne is definitely gonna come in number one. The weapons, the amount of variety in combos you can have with the transformations, the gun mechanic, Everything in this game is ridiculously awesome. The DLCs just solidified this game as a classic. I think it's really one of those games where the DLCs add so much. Uh, it is just crazy. This game, again, is another super replayable game, although not as much as the other Souls games. I still sometimes jump back into it. The art style is awesome. Bosses are awesome. Yeah, you cannot go wrong with Bloodborne. Of course, we had another great game from that year, and that is Mortal Kombat X. Sure, Mortal Kombat X had some problems at the start. The online was not the best. In fact, online was quite shitty for a good while until they changed the netcode. And sure, you had some extremely broken characters at the start. However, Mortal Kombat X will always hold a special place in my heart for introducing me and really getting me into fighting games. Of course, I've played fighting games before that just kind of mashing out stuff as a kid in the arcade, but MKX really solidified my love of fighting games. I have played fighting games ever since then, and it is truly a genre of games that I've became hooked on thanks to this game. The combat is exhilarating, the game is fast-paced, it is fun, Unfortunately, neither of the two NRS games that have come since have managed to grab me in quite the same way as MKX did. I truly think this game had something special in the gameplay, even though a lot of people hated it because, to be frank, there was a lot of bullshit in this game in terms of you looking at it purely as a fighting game. However, in terms of it being a fun game to watch and it being a fun game to play casually online, nothing beats it. So it's got to be at the top and this is why I couldn't decide between this or Bloodborne because both equally hold a special place in my heart. Moving on to 2016. 2016 I would say again was kind of a mix year in gaming for me. Again nothing particularly sticks out for me uh, from that year. Sure we had some big blockbusters but yeah overall uh, I don't remember picking up a particularly large amount of games that year. 
However, we did get something wonderful. We did get something magical. If you can use magical to describe this game, and that game is Doom. I mean, Doom 2016 has to be hands down one of the best reboots of any game series ever. No other game has managed to so successfully capture the spirit of an older game, aside from maybe Resident Evil 2's remake that came out this year. Uh, Doom is a wonderful shooter. I mean, combined with the fact that the shooting mechanics are rock solid, again, it really has captured the feeling of just mowing down enemies, blasting through a horde of demons with your awesome ass weapons. The movement is really solid. It's probably one of the only games that really, maybe aside from Metroid Prime, that really nails first person platforming well. Uh, the game is absolutely brutal, the weapons are creative, the enemies are absolutely fun, and yeah, that is the one word that you can use to describe this game, it's fun. It's one of the most fun shooters you can get in an era where, you know, overly scripted, extremely short campaign, extremely easy cover-based shooters dominated. I mean, even the first-person games tended to play very, very slow. We had a game that just, you know, turned the fucking boosters on and said, fuck it, we're gonna, dis we're gonna deliver an old-school shooting experience. And for that, Doom will always be one of my favorite shooters out there. 2017. We had some good games in 2017. There's one in particular. Uh, this is the time where I've actually started to make uh, these year-end lists. So if you've been paying attention to my channel for a while, you might know some of these upcoming uh, choices. 2017, there's one game there that sticks out to me, and that game is Cuphead. I mean, Cuphead, no other game with this art style has been done before it or has come since. Uh, it really, truly is a game that is born out of passion. Everything from the art style to the meticulously created levels, the meticulously created bosses, to the gameplay, to the music, everything from this game shows that everybody working on it has put their heart and souls into it. And it really shows, aside from being an extremely unique game to look at and listen to, Cuphead is wonderful in the gameplay department. I mean, boss rush games tend to not be my favorites, but combined with this art style and the amount of challenge it offers, you just cannot go wrong with Cuphead. I mean, the amount of depth there is to this very simple looking game with your weapon choices, your tactics, how you approach every situation is just crazy. Is it the most replayable game? No. Is it the longest game out there? No. Hopefully the DLC will eventually come out adding some new bosses and new levels. Until then, Cuphead is going to be a game that will forever be unique and I think that's something really important. I mean, in the 2010s we really saw how homogenized games have become and Cuphead was the one game that stood out. All right, 2018, 2018, we are going to change things up. If you watched my video from last year, you will know that 2018's game of the year for me was Smash. Uh, Smash Ultimate, while an excellent game, has been overtaken by another game, my number two pick for that year, Into the Breach. And the reason for it is very simple. I simply looked at which game have I played more since then. And that obvious choice is Into the Breach. While I love Smash, truly, I have to admit, it's not the game that I play most. I don't know why I like it. There's nothing really that pushes me away from it. It's just Into the Breach has definitely been the game that stuck with me more. It is a tactical RTS games. In an era where RTS games have basically disappeared, it's nice to at least get the tactical variant, the turn-based ones, uh, and Into the Breach delivers on the tactics. If you're craving, well, more of a puzzle game, really, uh, that also involves shooting and turn-based tactics, definitely look into Into the Breach. It also captures this idea that some of the previous games on the list offer, especially FTL Faster Than Light, offering essentially endlessly replayable scenarios. No two playthroughs of Into the Breach feel the same. Whether you're using some crazy mech team or whether you get into some crazy scenarios, like, it's crazy. Again, you can replay this game endlessly and no two playthroughs will feel the same. Sure, it's not the most exciting game to look at, although I think the art style is extremely charming. 
uh, overall, it is something that's definitely worth picking up because the tactician itch, if you have it, will definitely be satiated playing this game. And now finally, we come to the last year of the decade, this year, 2019. And I think the choice is going to be obvious, maybe a little bit too obvious, because 2019's game of the year for me has to go to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I mean, Sekiro has been another mixed bag uh, in terms of fan reception. I don't know if a Souls game has been this polarizing, maybe since Dark Souls 2 came out. It really is a love it or hate it type deal, uh, mainly referring to the combat system. A lot of people dislike it because it is specifically designed in a way to destroy Souls players who have built up a lot of muscle, muscle memory over the years. Because this game focuses on blocking, block timing instead of dodging. Uh, you really have to approach this game more as a rhythm game where you have to rhythmically uh, tap and memorize the block button for each enemy attack. However, for me, someone who enjoys the combat system, this game is absolutely wonderful. I love the freedom of movement you get in this game. Finally, we have a Souls game where jumping, where moving around, where going up to heights, where you know, jumping from one place to another doesn't feel like an absolute crapshoot. I think it's really important that they did this because this type of game with more sluggish controls would have never worked. I think the movement is fluid, the stealth is excellent, the uh, combat system is a lot of fun. The game actually offers a lot of challenge. This is the hardest time I've had with a Souls game since the first Dark Souls. I mean, I will admit that because it is specifically designed to break your muscle memory and you have to kind of reprogram yourself when playing this game and i think that's one of the things that a lot of people kind of uh disliked because sometimes honestly it does feel like FromSoft specifically said fuck you to the long time dark souls fans not negatively but you know they specifically designed this combat system this way however overall the game is very solid the combat system is excellent if i had to criticize this game for something it is not the most replayable Dark Souls or Soul series game out there, mainly because you are stuck with one weapon and one set of combos throughout the entire game. However, that overall doesn't distract. However, that overall does not detract from the experience, especially when you consider some of the highlights like the excellent boss fights that come with this game. So, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, excellent, excellent game. Just as a side note, if I had to uh put a second place for this year it has got to go to resident evil 2 a game that well it's probably the best remaster in the last few years uh i'm so glad that they did uh resident evil 2 justice i'm so glad they updated it this way i'm so glad they are upgrading resident evil 3 as well and i just wish that silent hill got the same treatment but it's never gonna get it is it Still, we can hope, we can hope, but I wanted to shout out Resident Evil 2 as well because it's truly a wonderful game. And so with that, this decade has come to a close. Well, obviously not because I'm uploading this on the 25th, so this is not exactly, we're not exactly closing out the decade just yet. And there will be more videos until New Year's and including some more special content. So if you like that, and you want to stick around in case you're new here make sure to like comment and subscribe you know i gotta do the usual youtube shit you know uh, if you enjoyed this video the like really helps out i really appreciate it also what have been some of your favorite games from this decade i'm really interested to hear what people like i know i missed out some on some classics i will admit that i did not play skyrim i did not play the witcher 3 and some of those games are really considered to be uh, the best by some people. Still, you cannot get around to everything. I try my best and there is more time to go. So we're not exactly, these games are not exactly going away in the next years. So yeah, there's always time. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.